Linux Directory Tree Navigation. In this video, you'll learn to navigate the Linux directory tree in the terminal environment. This is the equivalent of pointing and clicking on various folders and files in the file browser. It takes some explanation if you're not used to it. But it's very quick, and it's very powerful, and it works even if the graphical user interface is broken. Some vocabulary. A directory is the same thing the GUI world calls a folder. A volume is what we used to call a drive or a disk or even a tape. Things are more complicated today, and volumes can span multiple drives, disks, or even tapes, so we'll use volume to mean that level of the storage system. If it helps to think of a volume as a physical disk, that's fine. The word file system has several meanings. We're going to use it for one thing, the data structures on the volume that allow the data to be stored and retrieved. These are created when the volume is initialized slash formatted. Modern Linux usually defaults to ext4, although there are lots of other options. Let's talk a minute about directories and what they are. A directory is a file-like part of the volume's file system that contains a list of other files and information about how to access them on that volume. In the Linux ext4 file system, each entry in the directory contains the file name, access information for the file's data, the inode number, the file's type, access information about the file's parent directory, and other stuff for the directory data structure to make it fast. You can have directories inside other directories until they form a tree-like structure. This is called the directory tree. The bottom of the tree is called root, or a slash with nothing in front of it, and each branch is a directory. I've installed a utility called tree on this Linux machine to show you what I'm talking about. The tree starts at root, here. In the root directory, you can find the boot, bin, and etc. directories, which contain system software and configuration files and the system bootloader. You can find the home directory, and in that is my directory, JRS, and in that is every directory I have, and so on. In more complex systems, a given directory may, in fact, be a mount point. I've hooked an old USB floppy drive to this virtual machine. When I put the floppy into the drive and click the floppy icon, Linux will automatically create a directory in slash media slash JRS and connect or mount the floppy drive to it. It will use the volume's name as the directory name, and the root directory of the new volume as its contents. The floppy just became part of the directory tree. I can use it the same way I use any other directory. The only difference will be speed. Floppies are slow. What are inodes and the inode table? Like the directory table, the inode table is a file-like part of the volume's file system. Each inode table entry contains the location and size of the file's data, the file's access control permission information, the file owner's ID, the file type, and the number of hard links to this inode, and a lot of other stuff that's mostly important when you're writing file system drivers. Unix and Unix-like operating systems were designed to be multitasking, that is, to have multiple things happening at once. Suppose program A is reading a file. Program B, running at the same time, deletes the file. What happens? The directory entry gets deleted, and the inode table is updated so the number of hard links to that inode is zero. But the program can go on reading the file as usual because it has the inode of the file. The inode still exists and the file won't be overwritten until program A lets go of it. Normally, we'll look at directory and inode information together. Let's take a short break here. When we come back in the next video, we'll look at tools for navigating the directory tree, ls, pwd, and cd.